Great. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being with us. I've got uh, my good friend here, Gene Roberts, with uh, EOS Worldwide. And I want to just take a few minutes with you this morning to explain to you guys what EOS is, um, give you a little background on Granite Harbor and how much positive impact the system's had for us. Um, and our relationship with EOS goes back about a year now. And we decided to embrace the idea of EOS because we were hitting some barriers in our business. Um, we were knocking up against the ceiling of what we thought we were capable of. It seemed like our business was going in a hundred different directions every single day and just didn't have a system to help us stay organized, stay focused, keep our employees motivated in the right direction. And so EOS uh, really has helped us pull all that together um, to where everybody's rowing in the same direction. So just want to kind of share a few thoughts with you guys and uh, how EOS can potentially help you guys. So with that, without further ado, I'll uh, introduce my good friend, Gene, and uh, just give us a little background on what EOS is. What does it stand for? What, what is it? Yeah, Brian, first, thank you for uh, even giving me the opportunity to share EOS with uh, everybody who's going to watch this video. So appreciate that very much. Uh, you know, so when you talk about EOS, one of the things I worry about is people think that it's this business religion, that people are going to ask them to drop their current religion and pick up a new religion or something yeah. like that. And quite frankly, it just isn't. And you know from experience, it's just a simple set of practical tools. The tools we're teaching in EOS, quite frankly, have been around for 100 years. They're going to be around for a thousand more. You know, it's just common sense, quite frankly. The only thing that we did with these tools was put them together in an operating system. Because many times we plug these tools in one by one and they just die on the vine. Right. But with an operating system built around them, we plug them in, they stay in. The next thing you know, everything's running well because we're just using a simple set of practical, mm -hmm. practical tools. Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense. So what would a company gain from implementing EOS? Well, you know, it's funny that, that you should mention what you did because there's two things there. Number one is what I typically see when they come in and what they gain as a result of starting their journey like, uh, like you did. Um, we, you know, we call it five frustrations. And what I see with most business owners or leaders in a business is that they feel like they've lost control. Control doesn't necessarily mean control of the business. It also means control of their life, control of their time, control of their schedule. Like, uh, you know, a lot of different ways to lose control, but they just feel like they're losing or they lost control. Uh, they also uh, feel like they're not generating the profit they should make. It doesn't mean they're not profitable. It doesn't have to be a business that's uh, underwater to embrace EOS. It just means that Potential is here. Reality is a little less than the potential, and they just want to close that, that gap. The third is people, right? They look around the organization, and they just wonder if they have the right people, but they really don't have an objective way of knowing whether they do or they don't. Next thing that we uh, see a lot is the hitting the ceiling, and you described it perfectly. Right. There was a point in time when everything was hitting on all cylinders. We were growing. Things were going great. And all of a sudden, we turn around one day, and we just feel like we're stuck. We've hit the ceiling, right? We get stuck as a company, as a department, or as individuals. Either way, that feeling of being stuck is just not good. And we just can't figure out how to get unstuck. And then the last thing we see is that nothing's working. So many people I run into, they read a book, they plug it in, works for a while, dies on the vine, right? They're trying this, yep. they're trying that. Nothing they try seems to be working. And that goes back to the whole idea of an operating system. Plugged in, stays in place, and all of a sudden it does start to work. So, yeah. you know, with that, here's what they end up getting. Uh, as, as a company that implements EOS, you get three things that we call V, T, and H. Vision, traction, and healthy. Vision is critical because many times the leadership team and the individual key players in a company have a vision for the organization, but they don't have the same vision. And they don't realize that a degree off or a two off is a crack. When there's a crack at the top, there's a canyon at the bottom. What we have to make sure is that everybody in the organization shares the same vision, starting with the leadership team. So by implementing EOS, the leadership team, and therefore the rest of the organization start to share a common vision for the organization. They're all on the same page with where we're going. The traction piece is, is uh, also important. So the traction piece is discipline and accountability. When you look around the organization, people just don't seem to be accountable. The level of accountability in your organization is just not where it needs to be. And quite frankly, we tend to blame the people. What we want you to do is look at the leadership team first. Are we being clear about our expectations? Do we have the right people in the right seats? Do they know what winning and losing looks like? Are they clear on what our expectations are of them? Because once we implement EOS, everybody's clear about their role and what's expected of them. The next thing you know, you look around the organization, we've got discipline and accountability. Everybody's stepping up and doing the great work. 
and all of a sudden we have traction. And healthy is something that most people look at and don't realize the importance of. Patrick Lencioni in the book, The Five Dysfunction says, it is not uh, technology or accounting or marketing. It is team health that is the ultimate competitive advantage, both because it is so powerful and because it is so rare. And the point here is this, we don't spend enough time focusing on the health of the team. A healthy, cohesive, collaborative leadership team will lead a great organization. Again, if there's a crack at the top, there's a canyon at the bottom. We need to be that united front in front of the rest of the organization. All arrows going in the same direction with that momentum and focus and attention where it needs to be. So that's what they get from implementing EOS. They get vision, traction, health. Yeah, that's that's great. And I can tell you from personal experience, the, the excitement that the team feels and experiences once everybody is rowing in that same direction that you mentioned, I mean, that is, that is something really special um, that we've been able to benefit from as well. So can you tell us a little bit about how it works? Um, so if somebody decides to go on this journey and implement this new model, how does that work? Well, thank you for saying journey because there's no magic pills. There's <laughs> sure. no silver bullet, right? It's hard work, but it's great work, as Gina Wickman would say. Um, the journey looks like this. First, we do this thing called a 90-minute meeting. By the way, Everybody should take advantage of a free 90-minute meeting. Every implementer in the world is willing to sit down with a leadership team and just put EOS on display, share the six key components of the business and how all the tools that are in the toolbox were designed specifically to strengthen each of the six key components of the business. So it starts with a 90-minute meeting, and it really isn't a sales meeting at all in any way, shape, or form. It's just an informative meeting that brings the leadership team together. You understand what EOS is, how it works, and what it looks like. And then that team can make a decision on how and if to move forward. But if they do move forward from there, there are three foundational learning days. We call them focus day, vision building day one, and vision building day two. Focus day is learning the five foundational tools. Traction before vision, because vision without traction is hallucination. We get that traction by understanding and mastering the five foundational tools that are built into the uh, entrepreneurial operating system. After that, we come back about 30 or 45 days later, about, you know, it's again, space learning. So we want to create a little bit of a gap. The team goes away. They work as a team. They start their meetings. They start using the tools. They come back. We do vision building day one. And this is where we start to complete and answer the eight questions on the vision traction organizer. Who are we? What are we? Where are we going? How are we going to get there? What's it look like three years from now? What's the plan for this year? What are the most important priorities for the 90 day world ahead? And what is holding us back? When you think about that, those two vision building days, both uh, just like the focus day and VB1 are spaced about 30 to 45 days apart. So that you can do the good work as a team, struggle a little bit as a team, but ultimately come together as a team. And as a result of that, we leave those three foundational days having mastered the tools with a clear vision for the organization and a clear plan to get there with a healthy, cohesive and united leadership team. After that, the implementer is only involved with our clients once a quarter to run the quarterly and annual meetings. And our goal, quite frankly, is over a period of about two years, slide out the back door knowing that the client can run this on their own without our involvement. We have no interest in becoming a long-term integral part of our client organizations. We just teach, facilitate, and coach, help you plug in the tools, get everything rolling. And when we disappear, nobody really knows. Yeah. And that objective presence in the meeting, I, I gotta say from just personal experience is invaluable. Um, because speaking from personal experience, we, we tried to self-implement um, in early summer of last year and struggled with it for a few months. But there may be some folks out there that feel like they have the resources and capacity to self-implement. So what suggestions or feedback can you give them um, that might help them make that decision as to whether or not it makes sense to partner with an implementer or if they should try to tackle this on their own? Can you give some, some feedback on that? Yeah, so first of all, please understand, we welcome and encourage self-implementation. <clears throat> but you have to be dedicated, you have to be committed. And what I will tell you is self-implementation can work, but the entire team has to be dedicated. Read the books, do the homework, join Basecamp, right? So you have access to the videos and the materials that we use when we're implementing with our clients. If you're not willing to invest that time and that commitment, I promise you, it just won't work. And the last thing in the world that we want is people running around thinking that EOS doesn't work. It quite frankly isn't that the tools don't work. It's that the team doesn't work. Sure. And so if you're just in a team where you need some outside discipline and accountability, you need somebody to come in who's going to make sure that they are creating a culture of accountability on the team through the process, 
you just might need an implementer. But either way, you can reach out to an implementer. Let them know you're self-implementing. Many of us will spend time and make sure we can help you fill in the gaps and clean it up. I will tell you, you'll get more from an implementer because you just don't know what you don't know. But the last thing in the world that I would suggest or try to do is to throw cold water on self-implementation. You're doing something. You're bringing the team together. You're speaking a common language. You're using a simple set of practical tools. I just can't imagine any harm could come from that. And if you decide to do that for a while and it's just not getting you to the next level, embrace an implementer. Bring them in. Let them do a 90. Let them help you clean it up. And you may just choose or know that you found the right implementer. Get them on the team and go through the process. Yeah. Makes Either perfect. one can. Yep. Yeah. So any other suggestions or thoughts for somebody that's just brand new to this and any, what would, what would you suggest as a first step? I know you mentioned that 90 minute meeting, but is there anything else that companies out there that are just looking for the right solution that what, what they should do as a first step? Yeah, absolutely. Read the book. Yeah. You know, just like the tools that I teach with my clients, the book just creates context. It doesn't tell you to do anything. It's just in the context of what it describes and what it shares with you. You're going to start to realize things in your business. It's going to start to shine a flashlight in areas that weren't typically illuminated, right? And so when you start to discover these things and see them, this is where you really start to decide whether this operating system can be helpful. And so by reading the book Traction, it's a great way to bring the leadership team together as well. Get everybody on the leadership team, the owners of the major functions of the business, right? right. To uh, read the book and start speaking the language, great things come from that alone. So that's number one. Number two, we have incredible resources online. There's an EOS Worldwide uh, YouTube channel. Lots some great videos, Gino Wickman, Don Tinney, Mike Payton, all of them out there sharing their experience and helping people understand what EOS is and how it works. EOS Worldwide website is another great website. And then of course, anybody can reach out to an implementer, pick our brains, ask questions. We're help first people, it's one of our core values. We get nothing out of life unless we help people get what they need out of life. So if you just want some advice, some suggestions, you just want to hear more about how it works, reach out to an implementer. Nobody's going to try to sell you anything. We're just going to make sure that you have the information you need to make a good decision. Well said. Well, I can tell you it's changed our life, Gene. And uh, we're really, really blessed to have, uh, to have met you and to have met the EOS community. And uh, the progress that uh, we've been able to accomplish together has been pretty extraordinary. So thank you very much for joining me this morning and uh, look forward to our continued relationship. Thanks a bunch. I'm grateful, I'm grateful for you and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yes, sir. Take care. Bye everybody. If you would like to learn more about how EOS may benefit your business or have other questions specific to your business planning strategies, please do not hesitate to reach out to us to schedule a visit. At Granite Harbor, we specialize in helping business owners and their families. We help them navigate difficult financial decisions associated with owning a business, transitioning into retirement, legacy planning, and much more. So feel free to visit our website at www.graniteharbor.com for more information or just give us a call, 832-461-0789, anytime. Thanks again and see you next time.